Hello guys and welcome to my AEW predictions. Um, we're going to predict the Revolution pay-per-view, what my thoughts are on it and where I think it's going to go. Um, so we're going to go through all the matches on the card and predict basically the winners. So we're starting off on the buy-in. Obviously first up we have Layla Hurst versus Chris Statlander. Now I don't know too much about Layla, I'll be honest. I know her gimmick is basically she's a badass, she's legit, obviously MMA background. That's what she is. She's tough. She's a badass. But this is an obvious winner for me, which is Chris Statlander. And the reason being, she's the most prominent one out of the two. Layla is mainly on dark, on elevation. She's not really had too many big spotlights on Dynamite, Rampage. Whereas Chris, she's been with best friends. She's feuded for the world title and actually looked really good when doing so. To the point where I thought she could have actually won. But... She's looked very good and she's looked very strong, but put in quite a prominent position. So I don't see a way where she loses to Layla. As much as Layla obviously looks good, that's a gimmick, I feel like Chris has got the better spot here and she will take the victory. Now, next up, we do have Hook versus QT. Now, this match should be a good match. QT obviously being a trainer, he knows how to put in a good match, he knows how to train people, he knows the fundamentals. Or I'd assume he does if he's training people. So he should be able to put on a good match to put Hook over. Hook, very over. He's been over since he debuted, even before he debuted. He has been one of the most over people in the company. And he's looked good. I mean, when he's competed, even his debut, everyone was impressed. He's done very well for himself. So it makes sense for me to continue that. I don't see it. I, do, I cannot see at all the QT win. I don't think anyone can. Hook has to win here. Is to put him over. QT hopefully will sell well for him. But QT's going to get a win here on the buy-in. Just to get more people used to him. Get get him a, his first pay-per-view win. And continue to build him up. There's obviously going to be big things for him. Don't know when. Don't know how long it'll take. But they've looked good. They've built him up well so far. And hopefully that continues. Next we have House of Black versus Eric, Penta and Pack. It's a massive shame to see Penta and Pac on a pre-show. I expected Pac to be a future world champion when he initially debuted and initially came into AEW. But now I think that's sort of long gone, sadly. But either way, I unfortunately see them losing here. House of Black, obviously, they've just got Buddy Murphy. They've got, obviously, Malachi, who, to be honest, he's not really my cup of tea. I'm not really into his gimmick. I don't think it's that great. But... They've obviously not long got Brody. They've got Buddy, who's a big, who's a big star, big name, good young prospect. I feel like the other team, apart from Pentapack, it's a thrown together team. House of Black has a much bigger future than these three thrown together. Um, obviously, maybe if um, Phoenix was in it, maybe I'd go with the other two. But House of Black, I you can obviously see the intent there is to build them up as a big dominant force. This is going to be a big win for them. Their first win is a free. I don't see this going any other way than a House of Black win. We have the Women's World Title Match, Thunder Rosa versus Britt Baker. This one is going to be... <sighs> I found this one easy to predict until I heard news about potential injury. Obviously, Thunder said she's not injured, and obviously there's talk she's not apparently not, but that she is. It's very conflicting. But I feel like... The most logical, most logical thing here is for Rosa to win. They've been building on that for ages. What feels like probably is actually about a year or something, a, a very long time on Rosa versus Brits, and it's going to accumulate. It's going to build up until here. Um, Thunder. It makes most sense for her to be the one to dethrone Brit. Brit has had a good run. It's been a long but good run. She's held the title well, but. It's time for Thunder Rosa to step up. For her to get her moment. Rose is very over. She's one of my favourite in the division. If not the my favourite. But it's time for her to get her spotlight. They've been building this for a while. It makes sense. She is the one I see dethroned in Brit. And most people see dethroned in Brit. I feel like it's been building up to this moment. Obviously Brit. She's got a potential full on feud with Jamie coming soon. And it makes most sense for Brit to lose it now. Obviously, Rosa, their feud's been long going. It's time to end it. Have Rosa get a moment. And then she can go off and put Jamie over in a non-title match. Because obviously, Jamie, I don't feel like she's ready for the title yet. 
So put her over. One not having a title. It's best for all parties if Rosa wins tonight. Next, we have the Tornado Trios match. Matt Hardy, Andrade, Isaiah, Isaiah versus Sammy, Darby and Sting. Obviously, everyone knows Sammy, Darby and Sting win. Sammy is the TNT title. He's been built up in a big way recently. Darby's always been in a prominent spot. And Sting, an absolute legend. The House of Hardy... Andrade House of Hardy, whatever they want to call themselves, AHFO, or AHO, whatever they want to call themselves. The obvious thing, the worst kept secret in wrestling, is Jeff is coming to AEW. This is got they're gonna find a way somehow to build up to Jeff in this match. I feel it I feel like there's gonna be a big way to build up to Jeff. What the most likely scenario is, Andrade turns on Matt, cost them the match, Isaiah sides with um, Isaiah sides with obviously Andrade. So then, what happens is Matt and Isaiah sides with um, obviously Andrade because Matt's obviously been criticizing him. He doesn't feel like he's helping him. Yada yada yada. So then, Matt needs to get back up, which he will do on Dynamite or Rampage in the form of Jeff Hardy. That's going to be what it's going to lead to. And then Jeff and Matt are going to Hardy boys are going to go back up against Andrade and his tag teams. So that's going to be what it is. Now, that is what's going to happen. They're going to, he's going to cost him the match. Sammy, Darby, Sting going over. Next up, we have the tag team match. Now, I've noted, look, you'll notice the graphic is not obviously the official one. I really struggled to find the match graphics for this pay-per-view um, or the official ones. Now, you'll notice a couple of other ones I haven't got the match graphic as well, but this one, this is the best I can find. So, we've got Jurassic Express versus Red Dragon and you. Young Bucks. I don't know why I went to say you Bucks. Um, Young Bucks, right. This one, I see going only one way, and that is Jurassic Express winning. I know the other teams are more than likely going to... One of the other teams, more than likely, Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish, is going to get the title soon rather than later. Don't think it's going to be this soon. They've only recently come in. I feel like their feud with Young Bucks is only getting started. There's so much more build-up for me before they can introduce the tag titles. There's so much more build-up. There's so much more tension and conflict to have. What is going to happen, I feel like, I don't know how exactly, but one of them is going to cost the other. Don't know which way. The only thing I could assume or think of is that they'll get so distracted. Um, say Bobby Fish is out on the apron. One of Matt or Nick is in the ring, and the other one is beating up um, or attacking and having a fight with Kyle Riley on the ramp, so they don't notice the other young buck is getting pinned in the centre of the ring by those two. That's the that's potentially it, but I don't know any other way that would be for you. Um, but that is the bet. That is my bet. I think Jurassic Express win this one, two, three. They retain. We have Jade Cargill versus Tay Conti. Now this one again, I think it's very easy to predict. Jade is winning. This match hasn't had much build-up. It's obviously had a couple of weeks, but it's not really been the build-up I would expect for Jay to lose a title. They built her up very well as some big megastar, and Tay is great as well. But the way they're building up Jade is this next big thing. I don't feel like they would have her lose her title in this way. She's not had it that long, and this feud hasn't really had the best build-up. If they're going to have a lose, it will be in a month or two, a really strong build up against someone else, Ruby, Nyla, whoever. It's going to be a really strong build up to a losing, not this build up. So this only goes one way and that is Jade winning 1-2-3 over Tay. Now, another one where the match graphic I haven't got and the reason I haven't got it is because I couldn't find it. But to be honest, these three are the main three I see as to, uh, to be choosing between for the winner anyway. Um, Hobbs, I don't feel like he's had much build-up recently. Don't feel like he's had much momentum heading into it, so I feel like it's between the other two. Now, Keith, only recently come in. I don't feel like they want him to take a loss so early. So, it makes more sense for me to him to win. I feel like he's going to be a dominant force in AEW. In AEW, I think he's going to be a dominant force, and I feel like he will beat Sammy. <sighs> because... I, d I just don't see him taking a loss already. I don't feel like he's going to get pushed aside or take a loss. And 
when it comes to the other two, Hobbs hasn't had as much momentum as Wardlow or Keith. And when it comes to Wardlow, it wouldn't make sense for me to him to have a TNT title. Unless he gets cost the TNT title by MJF. That's the only way I can see that going. But I feel like that's pointless. Um, because he's got so much going on. He's got that feud with MJF obviously coming very soon. I don't feel like he needs a TNT title as a distraction from that. I feel like he's got enough going on on in on his own without needing a TNT title to complicate it. So for me, I'm going with Keith. Next up, we have Jericho versus Eddie. And for me, I'm not really fast on Jericho, but this is a big match for Eddie. And I feel like he's winning. In the promos, the build-up, they've obviously built him up as you're never going to win the big one, blah, yada, yada, yada. You're never going to win the big one. So guess what he's going to do? He's going to win the big one. I don't know about the world title, just because I feel like there's so many people there that could win the title and that could be that top face, that top face, the top heel, the top guy in the company, that I'm really struggling to see him winning that, or at least not anytime soon. But I feel like he needs a big win and Jericho's going to be that for him. He obviously didn't win Punk, but he had he put on a good show and had a hell of a feud with him. This is going to be his big feud. This is going to be his big win. He's going to beat Jericho. Jericho doesn't need the win. He's Jericho. He's going to be fine regardless. He does not need a win here. He's a big name. He's going to, even if he loses to Eddie, he hasn't really lost any credibility. He's still going to another feud with someone else to be just as prominent. There's no issues with him losing here, and I feel like he will. Then we go into John Moxley versus Daniel Bryan. And I'd say this is predictable, but not for the reason the others are. I, I don't really have much logic behind this one. I feel I think John Moxley's gonna win, as I'm sure most people do. But there's not really much logic to it. I feel like John Moxley is gonna be the the first set double first double champion in AEW, two time world champion. But um, <coughs> Daniel Bryan doesn't need this. He's doing he's he's in a good spot, putting over young talent in matches, having great matches with them, and just biding his time having great matches. That's all he's doing, and I feel like he's happy in that spot at the minute. Obviously, he can easily build up for a world title feud in the future, but he doesn't need this win. Obviously, John has looked good. They want him to have the feel good factor at the minute. They want him to have a big push, and I feel like this would be the start of it. A good win over Brian, and he's going to beat him. John Moxley is winning here. I don't see any other outcome. Next up, we have the world title match Hangman versus Cole. I was torn on this one. I was torn. But then. I thought about the elephant in the room, which is Kenny Omega. Now, Hangman and Omega is done. That is out of the question. That is done. Hangman, I was torn because Hangman hasn't had that long of a reign and Cole hasn't been in the company that long. But I feel like Cole's going to win here. And the reason I feel like he's going to win is because, yes, he hasn't been in that long, but they put him in a very prominent position. Very prominent position. And I don't feel like in his position he, cannot, he will take a loss yet. Like he will go on a very good run until, with that title, him, Undisputed Era, him, Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish versus Young Bucks and a returning Kenny Omega. Cole versus Omega for the title. That is going to happen. That is, I, I'm very confident on that. He is going to win the title so he can have that Omega feud. So for this, I'm going Cole win. Final match, which is going to be the dog collar match, CM Punk versus MJF. Now, I was torn on this one, and I partially still am, because I don't feel like I even need the win. What I mean by that is MJF has already got a win over Punk. He's already got a win over Punk. He's had a his biggest food of his career. He's got the rubber Punk. Had some, had obviously that promo a few weeks ago, which was the best promo of his career. Best promo he's ever done. Without a doubt, best promo. But he doesn't need this win. He really doesn't. So, to me, it does not make sense. It doesn't make sense either way. Punk, I feel like the, the only logic I'm going with here, and Punk doesn't need the win either, but the only logic I'm going with here is recently MJF's got the better of Punk. Throughout the entire food he has, actually, he's beat, uh, he's beat Punk multiple times. He's beat Punk twice, apparently. He's beat Punk twice. Um, he's had multiple beatdowns. He's had that promo. He's worked him. That's the only logic I'm going with. He's got the upper hand over Punk too many times. So this is where Punk finally gets his own back, gets the win. And that is my only logic for it. 
So they have been my AEW predictions for Revolution. Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, if you liked, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. Thank you and goodbye.